Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So in just a couple of days' time, according to Microsoft, next week Tuesday on the 14th of October, that's when Microsoft says it's going to be ending support for Windows 10, which is now 10 years old. So I thought because of this, this may be a good time just to have a look at a couple of options that you have if you are still running Windows 10. Now, as you may well know, the end of support means that Microsoft will not be rolling out updates to your device through Windows Update or any other means. Now, although this is the case, if you do find yourself using Windows 10 and you're not connected to the internet, which I think would be more the minority than, than the majority, then you really don't really have anything to worry about regarding security issues. But if you are connected to the internet on Windows 10 when it reaches its end of support, and obviously this could affect the security of the device and especially the longer we move away from the end of support over the next coming months that could start affecting your device in regards to security issues as I've mentioned previously on the channel. Now a quick look at your options as mentioned. Now I think the most viable kind of solution and option would be to join the ESU which I've already enrolled to. I'll leave a video I posted on how I did that, link down below and in the end screen. And I think this would be the best option for most running Windows 10 if you don't want to move on to Windows 11. And what this does, quick recap, your support is extended for another year if you are a home user and three years for business PCs. And users in the European Economic Area EEA can sign up for free which I have posted on previously. And you get three options, $30 for one year. You can pay with a thousand rewards points or in my case, I was backing up my settings to the cloud. And the only problem with that though is you need a Microsoft account. So I think the extended security updates program would be the best option for most. And then, of course, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free if your PC meets the hardware requirements to be upgraded to Windows 11. And that will appear as a feature update on your Windows Update page, as you may well know. If it isn't compatible, then there are third-party tools you can use to install Windows 11 on your unsupported Windows 10 PC if it doesn't meet the requirements by using third-party apps like Fly OOBE, I've just posted on the recent update to this app. Go check that out on the channel. And other open source tools like Rufus. Just to mention two examples, there are others. And then another option is you can sign up to Opatch, which is a third party solution that will provide critical security updates. for Windows 10 once it goes out of support. And this will cost you $30 per year. But you also get support for other Microsoft products, such as Office versions that Microsoft no longer supports. And this is also quite a popular option, as I've seen in the comments. And then, of course, another option is you can always switch to Linux. And I see a lot of the switch to Linux in the comments, which makes me chuckle from time to time. But I think for your not so tech savvy person, this can be a bit daunting, although that is debatable. And I think would be the best option if you plan to use your PC for a longer period of time. So you want to get the most out of your hardware. As an example, you don't want to run out and purchase a new PC or you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11. Linux is another viable option. Now I'm showing you Linux Mint, which I think is very close to what the layout and the look and feel and the user flow is over on Windows 10. You've also got Linux Lite, you've got Zorin OS, which is another good choice. You've got Ubuntu, you've got Pop OS, just to mention a couple of examples. There's a ton of other distros out there, but I think Linux Mint, Linux Lite, Zorin, Pop OS are most probably your most viable options. And another option, if you want to install another operating system, on your device to get the most out of your current hardware then you can also try out chrome os flex which i have posted on previously you can just do a search regarding that on the channel where 
Google says you can breathe new life into your existing devices. So that's also another option. And then, of course, another option would be Microsoft's recommended, which would be to buy a new PC. Now, this will work out well if you need a new PC anyway and have the money to do so. But obviously, a lot of people don't. And this has caused a lot of debate where obviously this can cause a lot of e-wastes. Although Microsoft has said you must recycle responsibly, I've posted on this in depth. And by the way, while we are talking about previous posts, I'll leave a playlist in the end screen of this video somewhere regarding the end of Windows 10, which has a whole lot of videos I've been covering leading up to the end of support. If you'd like more information on different topics regarding the end of support. So I think buying a new PC is the one that's caused the most debate because of all the e-waste being generated and the cash it's going to be to lay out and so on. But I have seen a couple of comments on the channel that viewers of this channel have already bought a new PC just to kind of get it done with. And although it does cost a bit of money, most probably would also be an easier option. But nonetheless, that would be first prize for Microsoft. Now, there is another option if none of the previous options that I've mentioned appeal to you. And that's you can just carry on using Windows 10 unsupported. And I've covered this quite in depth. And I'll leave a video linked down below in the end screen titled Reasons to Stay on Windows 10 After Support Ends. Because I'll just go through my thoughts on that. And that is another option. Check the video out for more information. And staying on Windows 10 is a very viable option, especially if you are not going to be connected to the internet and are just going to be using it offline. But if you are connected to the internet, there are a couple of thoughts to take into consideration just for security, safety and so on. Check the video out for more info. It'll give you a lot more information. So there we have it, guys. Just a couple of options you have with that upcoming end of support that's going to be ending next week, Tuesday for Windows 10. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.